Welcome to the Jagger Inside Spend webinar and podcast series. I'm your host, Ellis Booker. Today our guests are two people from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Nikki Mundell, Procurement Systems Analyst and Solution Administrator, Strategic Procurement Services, and Nicole Fowler, Manager, Senior Procurement, Acquire and Accounts Payable, Strategic Procurement Services. Welcome, Nikki and Nicole. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much, Alice. Nikki and Nicole recently presented at RUG 2018 about Queen's migration away from a paper-based procurement system. It's a choir system, which went live last May with Jagger Modules, Indirect E-Procurement, and Indirect Accounts Payable, is a blueprint for anybody looking to make this kind of migration. But before we hear about the deployment, what prompted it, where Queens is today, and what's coming in the future, uh, can you tell us something about Queens University and the team? Absolutely. Thanks again for the opportunity for us to share with uh, the audience on our uh, system. We're very happy with our e-procurement journey so far and excited to see it continue to evolve. We are Queen's University located in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Our campus size is made up of about 24,000 students. That's undergraduate, graduate, and medicine students. About 3,500 faculty and about 5,400 staff. Uh, Queen's is a very decentralized model which allows faculties and departments a lot of autonomy in their procurement and financial decision making. Our procurement team is made up of about 16 staff which includes AP staff members. We actually transitioned AP to our core um, procurement umbrella in the fall of 2017. In 2016, we launched a project to implement Jagger Indirect E-Procurement and Indirect Accounts Payable, branding our system as Acquire. And we saw that launch to the university in a phased rollout approach beginning May 2017. Near the end of that rollout, we launched the project to implement indirect supplier management, going live with that in February 2018. We get this question quite often, so we'd like to confirm our ERP system here at Queen's is PeopleSoft. Great. Um, well, can you tell us about moving from paper check requisitions to electronic remittance forms? For starters, what prompted that change? Sure. I mean, we would consider this um, the transition from paper check requisition forms to electronic remittance forms to be one of our biggest successes with Acquire. Uh, the point of these forms in both the prior and current formats is to remit payment to a supplier with no purchase order to support the purchase. And for purchases typically under $10,000 Canadian, obviously with some exceptions um, sprinkled in there, the prior singular form was utilized for one-time payments repeat payments, uh, reportable income payments, research transfers, et cetera, essentially close to any kind of non-PO supplier payment request that we process here at Queen's. So there were several factors to prompt the change. Uh, some of these might be stating the obvious, but we wanted to improve our environmental footprint. Uh, we wanted to reduce approval workflow delays and eliminate the risk of paper loss. Uh, we were also eager to provide transparency into the status of requests for not only our end users, so meaning with the paper form submission process, our users had no knowledge of where the form was on campus after they put the form in the mail bag, who it ended up with if it did reach finance, and or where it was in the workflow queue. So our users were essentially hoping for the best when they put that paper form in the mail and just waiting for the transaction to show up against their statements. Changing would also, sorry, go ahead, Ellis. Well, I was just curious. I mean, were you getting? You mentioned the issues with the with the with the users. Uh, were mm -hmm. they? W w was their irritation with the old system, the paper-based system, part of what caused this, or was it more of a forward-thinking strategic uh, concept on your part? Yeah. So I would say both. Um, we saw a lot of feedback from our users about 
you know, the headaches involved in that paper process, some of the reasons we just mentioned, um, transparency, visibility, uh, delays, uh, that kind of thing. But also for, you know, to move us forward in this realm, we knew we were starting an e-procurement journey and we just wanted to kind of evolve into that, into that future as well. So changing would also create this kind of transparency for our procurement and finance teams. So not just the end users, um, our procurement and finance teams would have us really be able to analyze the data of these transactions more. Uh, we also wanted to decrease the volume of against policy purchases. So related to non vendor record commodity purchases or invalid signing authorities, that kind of thing. And we also wanted to reduce the lack of payment differentiation. Um, so we had one form as kind of a catch all form for everything. We really wanted to set these types of requests apart from one another. Right. And just so for a level check, what what is the spend volume we're talking about here or the direct and indirect um, approximately? That's a good question. It's a question that we uh, kind of go back and forth on, on what our spend truly is. Um, the last time I believe our number was around uh, 350 million is what our spend was. We do, we are a large um, university with uh, a large university in the sense that we have a very research intensive um, wing and a lot of our spending is in the research realm. Got it. One thing's notable from what you've what you've said so far, ladies, is is the reduction in process steps and uh, the potential, I guess, for for uh, better workflows. Um, is, is that right? Definitely agreed. Uh, the former paper state was very manual. It was inefficient, uh, lacking transparency and visibility, and it was a lengthy end to end process. So our transformation process involved creating three new electronic remittance forms in Acquire, um, a one-time payment form, a payment request form, and a research fund transfer form. Building workflow to capture specific reviews and approvals on each of these forms, and then we actually began to phase out the singular paper form. So this moved us to a current state of about 95% of our paper payment requests now flowing through Acquire, utilizing electronic and automated workflows, seeing much more efficient processing times and enhanced visibility into request statuses. So this essentially cut the end-to-end -end process time in half. Um, and because we can get so creative with form building and workflow in Acquire, we can really customize these requests to the university's needs and get the right players involved in the workflows. And one question that comes up all the time is, has this all helped you uh, tamp down on that rogue spend that, that seems to be, plague uh, university environments? Um, have, do you have any thoughts on that? Absolutely. So um, are we 100% in compliance on rogue spending? No, but um, I would say that we are definitely closer than we once were. So the fact that we have complete visibility and uh, can see the payments that we're going through. So Nikki spoke to that beforehand with the paper processes. Some things didn't come to procurement to review. So then what would happen is, is that they would just go through the finance system without a, a check from procurement. Well, now that it all flows through the acquire system, we have complete visibility. So. Um, there are times that we make exceptions, but for the most part, we're, if we're able to have a conversation with our clients about um, what the proper process is and what should be followed going forward. That's great. And I clearly see the, the benefits of the workflow and the ability to uh, create new, uh, new forms and so forth. Are there other benefits that, that accrued from all this? Absolutely. I mean, the benefits are tangible. So we've reduced the burden of manual work on our AP and our reception staff. Our procurement staff, like Nicole said, has much more awareness into traffic and data analysis of these types of transactions, which has actually led us to creating new, more efficient spreadsheet upload processes. So that's a very tangible benefit. Um, now that we're able to include the right players in the workflows for these forms, we're more compliant to procurement policies and legislation like Nicole mentioned as well. We're also able to real-time budget check these transactions rather than waiting for the paper forms to be entered into the system to check those details and then potentially running into a headache at that point. And in general, we've seen an increase in automation 
transparency and efficiency of the whole end-to-end -end processing of these types of requests while significantly reducing our manual paper processing. Right. Um, around the analytics, what are you using for that? Is this still, um, are, are you using the Jagger tool for this, something else, uh, spreadsheets? What, what's the approach? Yeah, so I think we're using a combination of Acquire, so the Jagger reporting functions, um, document search, that kind of thing, but also some reports that we have in our ERP system of PeopleSoft. So it's still a combination. Uh, we'd like to move towards more exploratory um, reporting in Acquire moving forward, uh, but currently it's both systems still. I think you've spoken to this, but this, this worry about um, – Electronic systems won't allow for the unusual circumstance, right? Because they're locked up. The 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 the, the, the stereotype is there there there's one form which expects a certain kind of transaction. How does your system handle exceptions? Yeah, we were very keen about this during our implementation because exceptions to procurement policy can be a big part of procurement here at Queens. Um, exceptions at Queens are classified as in the event a department wishes to make a purchase but is unable to secure the required number of quotes, um, they've made an, an emergency purchase as defined by the procurement policy and the policy on approval and execution of contracts and invoices, or they wish to select a supplier which has not provided the lowest quote. So we break this down even further into four general types of exceptions, uh, goods service, high bidder, construction, and consulting. So kind of talking about our former state, our transformation, and our current state with this, these purchases used to be supported by a paper form, which was manual, inefficient, uh, it lacked transparency into the status of the request, and was oftentimes significantly lengthy end-to-end -end process, trying to shuffle the paper form around campus, getting all the appropriate approvers to sign off on the purchase as well. So we wanted to have Acquire improve these processes with the focus on a much more user-friendly type of process. So we created custom fields for display and use on our requisition documents in Acquire, one for each type of exception situation, and then we built approval workflow to relate to each exception scenario and custom field selection. The change management aspect of this transformation was to really communicate these updates to the Queen's community to ensure that our users were aware of the new processes for these scenarios. This led us to our current state where we see 99% of exception requests and forms vetting through Acquire, which has cut our paper processing consumption and reduces the manual burden on Queen's staff to process the transactions. And also thanks to our electronic and automated workflows, we can quickly get the right approvers involved and reviewing the purchase transactions, resulting in much more efficient processing times and visibility into these transaction statuses. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious how, how this visibility and, uh, and uh, into, into the processes uh, has affected your supplier base. Is, is, are you uh, beginning to rationalize them based on the fact that you now can, can see them better, more holistically, or is it not having an effect as of yet? It is having some effect in the sense that um, with us implementing the, uh, the supplier module, we are actually asking questions about um, suppliers as we're setting them up and whether or not an exception will be requested. Um, so it allows us to do a review at the time of the supplier setup and make a determination. We, it's not a full review of the procurement process, but it allows us to have a conversation on whether or not we should be setting up suppliers. Um, universities, I think, as a whole are unique with their supplier base just because we do purchase a soup to nuts. And the fact is, is that um, with our research wing, there's a lot of times that there is only one supplier that can provide this or we have such a unique need in our research project that we do have to set up more suppliers than perhaps a private company would. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well said. Let's move on now to speak about the library transition, which I think you two described as operating, quote, predominantly solo which is a scary phrase for any procurement organization. What are the, uh, what are the issues exactly? So the library was definitely a group we identified as having the potential to optimize by using Acquire. 
as you mentioned, they operated predominantly on their own in terms of procurement. Um, our team was really not heavily involved in uh, them strategizing their procurement needs, which resulted in a lack of supporting exemption documentation for this particular group. Uh, they weren't able to easily track their budget and expenses since they were not utilizing the same procurement tools the rest of the university was at the time. They also had a very manually intensive and lengthy end-to-end -end process overall. But to get granular, they had developed their own unique method of payment request submission in the form of a paper ticket and sent through campus mail to our finance team, um, the AP team for processing of payment. This meant they had little to no visibility on the status of their payment requests. So there was a lot of uh, conversations over phone about payment status. They spent, um, they were spending manual effort to source new suppliers' information and to reconcile their P card because they had a high volume of transactions purchased on uh, purchasing a credit card. Right. So um, where are we now? The status. So it's drastically improved. Um, we've seen a strength in relationship with procurement in the form of a dedicated buyer and AP staff member. Uh, it's a direct line of contact if required. It also allows the buyer and the AP person to have um, a greater understanding of the library group. It's been educational, but it's also uh, transitioned the dynamic into a proactive a trusted advisor type of relationship, meaning they now call us before, not after the fact. Mm -hmm. They've increased their blanket PO volume and acquire, which is allowing them to easily track their spend and expenditures in a much more efficient manner. We also have seen them move a high volume of their former uh, P card spend into acquire, so they've been able to reduce their manual monthly uh, reconciliation efforts. And there's no more paper tickets. They streamlined their payment requests to now be through the electronic remittance request, like the rest of the university. Overall, the library group was aware that there was a need to look at their current processes. And the implementation of Acquire afforded them the opportunity to do so. They're now reaping all the benefits we previously listed. And we see it continuing to go from here. And that's where we're yeah. at today. I love that, uh, that, that fact that you have buy-in now from this group that was sort of off to the side, and they're now talking to you, it sounds like, uh, more proactively, I think you said, than, than in the past. That's a very interesting uh, change. I'd like to move on to some um, questions that came in uh, over the last few days from our audience um, when we said we were going to have you guys on, and I'll just go through a few of these in the, in the time we have remaining. Um, Question number one, are there any groups within the organization not using the Jagger system? Yeah, so I don't think, uh, we've got a few affiliated groups that kind of are not, you know, in the same uh, realm of using the Jagger system as some of our more popular or more um, active departments. Um, but for the most part, I think adoption has been quite high with the with the university, and there's certain reasons why some of these groups might not um, need to or be able to use the Jagger system, but overall, I would say the majority of our departments and faculties here at Queen's are using the Jagger system acquire. I'm just gonna add to Nikki's answer as well. Um, so we have, like our core group of faculties and departments and schools are all on the Jagger system. It's um, a lot of Ontario universities have a number of relationships with affiliate groups that might use our payroll system or our financial system, but have their own governance and, and such. So it's some of those that we haven't actually moved over as of yet, but we're hoping over the next fiscal year that we will uh, look to shift them over into Jagger. Got it. Um, and this next one, is the AP team part of the procurement umbrella? So we mentioned this a little bit in our presentation, um, but yes, they are. So what happened is, is that previous to September 2017, they were part of the finance team. So procurement and finance um, are under the same uh, vice principal, but um, we are two separate departments. When we went to implement Acquire, it became apparent to our senior administration that it would better serve the university 
to move the account payable team over into procurement so we have a complete end-to-end -end solution. So it's the, that procure to pay in its truest form. Right, and, and that that's a that's an organizational change uh, that a lot of companies and, and uh, academic institutions are going through. How's that been, <laughs> merging these departments or having to work together? So it's actually been very successful. The, um, of course, there was some apprehension in the beginning, uh, like changing and merging departments can be a, a little nerve-wracking, especially for those employees involved in the process. But um, we've had a lot of successes. It's also taken the team and um, created a lot of efficiencies too. So in addition to sort of the P2P process being in, completed through one department, it's also allowed us to approach our client service a little bit differently too. So mirroring what we've tried to do on the buyer side, with, we have sort of a hybrid model of buyers assigned to commodities and maybe departments. We've also done that on the AP side. So we're actually getting a lot of success by doing that, um, and our clients are liking that. We can't, we can't do it for all uh, departments because some are fairly small here, but like in the instance of libraries, it made sense that you, they had a dedicated buyer and a dedicated account payable person so that they have this one point of contact. It doesn't mean that another buyer can't step in in absences or another AP person couldn't, but it's the fact that we, we recognize that they're a bit unique, high volume, and it's better that we have more of a knowledge base in our units to support them better. And that's uh, unfortunately going to be the last answer because we're run out of time. Um, I'd like to thank Nicole and Nikki for being our guests on this edition of Jagger Inside Spend. Um, have a great day. Thank you so much, Alice.